finals is about to get underway. Let's make some noise in here, eh? Come on, this is the grand finals. Team Refuse taking on the French Titan Supremacy. Supremacy coming off the back of an elimination bracket run. Harry, how are you feeling about this one, my friend? Oh, man, I can't wait to see how this one goes down. Empire Strongholds is that game number one. So, so pivotal for Supremacy to take this one. So it's going to be very important. They keep an eye on those power-ups and make sure they keep scrapping over this pit. Two dead off the start for Team Infused here. Kimbo has that green gun as well. Not sure if that... Either of those camo or the overshield has actually been picked up. Here we go. I actually see one of them being picked up right now on our screen. It's Kimbo who's going to get the camo in his hands. Also, importantly for Team Infused here, they have already managed to get control of that bottom mid stronghold. Kim Kimbo trying to finish off this kill here. Going to drop down on SLG. Trying to relocate his crosshairs towards this other player as well in the tower. Going to pick up two. A strong start here for Kimbo. Yeah, very strong start. And this is a worry here for Supremacy. Two in a row there for Kimbo, actually. And it's a very, very strong start for him. One thing I will say is that Infused, they have such strong slayers across the board. Kimbo is one of them, and when you arm him, allow him to grab that camouflage and plasma pistol. He's going to pick up five kills in a row. Absolutely no problem at all, and he's done just that. Yeah, Kimbo picking up a kill. Kimbo on a bit of a tear at the moment. Strong start from him. Still has a slither of his camouflage left as well. Looks like Team Infused is going to be trying to push the triple cap. Grenades are coming in, though. SLG manages to take down Kimbo. Going to be two dead now. Potentially three dead. That's going to be three down here for Team Infuse, so a chance here for Supremacy to jump straight into that pit, and you would expect them to do so. This being oh, no. there from Respectful is going to cost him his life, and not only that, the pit is going to be turned over to the French squad. It is, and it was SLG who took down Respectful, and a potential triple cap opportunity right here. There is a fight going on in that blue base. You can see it ticking away, and there you go. Total control at an opportune moment. If they can continue the pressure right here, wouldn't be surprised to see Punisher maybe back off a little bit here, considering SLG did just go down. And he will actually be taken down. So we'll swap back over to SLG. And it was a pivotal point of the game to grab that total control because the power ups coming up very, very soon within the, within the next 20 or so seconds. So this pit fight is actually very, very important right here. And SLG is all by himself. He's going to go down. I believe Jimbo just went down as well. So we'll swap back over to the infused side. They retake the pit, they regain scoring. And now I have turbine control ready for this next overshield in the next 10 or so seconds. Looks like Coach has, have a, has good timing on that as well. You can see Team Infused moving outside towards that turbine, as you say, Harry. And it is going to be Mose who picks that one up. And now Mose, we talk about him being one of the most aggressive players when he does have that power up in his hands. Already pushing in, but on the other side of things, you can see Supremacy here. They're prioritizing that camouflage, but the timing is perfect. Coach Havoc coming to the fore here for Team Infuse is going to be both the power ups in their hands. Yeah, Kimbo with the camouflage, Mose with that overshield, as we saw before, and now Kimbo. That's his second killing spree of the game. What a hot start from him. Second camouflage for him as well. 30 to 16, the scoreline, and Punisher just went down, as did Fragger. That's not looking good here for Supremacy. You can see Respectful right there. His intent on top middle is to pressure that red base. They don't have to push in right here, despite them getting two slays in a row. If they did, they could potentially turn over that pit stronghold. Punisher will grab the first kill of the new respawns. Now it's very important for Kimbo to stay alive right here because Punisher and the boys, they are looking for that pit stronghold. Yeah, and a great job from Kimbo that you might think he's not picking up kills, but the amount of damage and shots and shields he is dropping while using this camouflage is just allowing his teammates to rotate around the map and essentially listen to what Kimbo is saying and finish off those kills. We see shots going in with that DMR, Respectful cleaning that one up. He's going to be challenging this player here. Doesn't get the beat down though, but immediately Respectful does trade that one out. And Respectful actually managed to pick up a double kill in that process. It looks like Nurix going to be moving in here to try and get control of this. But in the meantime, a momentary triple cap coming in once again for Team Infuse. Swapping over to SLG right here. He was the one trying to contest that pit. You see, he got it about a quarter of the way ticked. And now this is good damage being put down here from SLG. Would like to have seen his teammates Try and get around and support him right there. We see Nurix on his death screen right there. Double and a perfect for Fragger, but the blue base, their only stronghold on the map right now, is being taken. Moses supplementing this push as well. Two in a row for him now. And this is looking really bad here for Super MC. Fair enough, they're going to try and take this pit as you see Kimbo just contesting this with his teammate, but a severe lack of turbine control. You can see some of the Supremacy players flooding in from that area right now, but throughout the game, they've been coming in from the front of the base, and it's been a very hard time for them. Yeah, while all of this is going on, of course, you can see that pit almost being converted. It finally is for Supremacy, but those power-ups are going to be popping at the same time, so it's going to be interesting to see Supremacy actually pick up a three dead in that situation, which should allow them to pick up the power-ups. Nurix here has that overshield. We saw Kimbo had the perfect time on that camo last time that one came up, so it'll be interesting to see if Team Infuse do try and move back in for that. That's going to be three camos in a row now for Team Infuse. And although Supremacy do have that power-up in the shape of the Overshield, Harry, we've seen how effective Kimbo's been with this one. Yeah, we've also seen how effective Overshield can be across the map. It is Nurix. He's in a fight right now. 
keep an eye on that kill feed. If he goes down, that's the overshield out of play. But Kimbo, yeah, he's had two camouflages in a row that he's really used to its full potential. If he goes down here, I might have just cursed him, but he's used them very, very well. Good little triple cap for a moment right there for Supremacy. And now Kimbo is in a very sneaky position. He might just be found out right here in the pit. He is being really sneaky with his camouflage, and now is the time to pounce. Now is the time to engage and help his teammates out in this team fight. One goes down, 1v1 on each side in terms of slays. 2v2 now. This is a very key pit fight. Actually. How is he still like alive? It's the game for Supremacy if they lose this fight. Nurex is nowhere near. And it looks like that actually will go into the favor of Supremacy. So a very good job from them. Yeah, and you can see immediately here, Nurex trying to pressure this triple cap. Jimbo lining up a ground pound, but he's not going to connect. Finally, Nurex. I wouldn't put too many shots in him, Nurex. You just yeah. missed about 10 yourself. Hit more when Jimbo was dead there than when one he was alive. Kimbo picks up a kill on the feed as well. So for the first time now, we're going to see Supremacy actually with a triple cap in effect. And Harry, when Supremacy, this French squad, they have triple cap and they have map control. We've seen how devastating they can be at just stifling their op opponents on these Strongholds game types. Yeah, picking up slays like Nurex did just there, especially as SLG trades with Jimbo, is going to be so important for them to maintain this control. Yes, they got a triple cap for a second, but they can't reinstate that until they start getting the first two slays. There's the first one. Let's keep an eye on this kill feed, see if another one's picked up. Nurex is doing a very good job getting that first kill, and there you go. There's that second one. That's why Nurex and now his teammate is going to push in there as well. Good job by Jimbo taking down one. Mose will help him out as well, and Kimbo now bouncing off of those two slays picked up by his infused teammates, he's going to push into the pit and that's going to be a quick turnover. But look at this score. We're all evened up right now. Looking at the overshield, it's going to be Moe's from Team Infused to pick that one up. Here we go then. Team Infused do get back. Not any control on the map. Second overshield in a row here for Moe's as well. Sorry, second overshield of the game. Three dead here for Supremacy as well. So it's going to be Kimbo with his fourth camouflage in a row here. You have to give credit to, again, to Havoc behind the Team Infused players here. He is so hot on that time on that camouflage. If Kimbo can use this anything like he has before, he's going to be in a perfect position to make something happen. Sees SLG, spots him out, trying to push this red base. And now this should be an easy kill, easy pickings for Kimbo. If he can finish this kill, oh, oh, please, he finally does. But he does get taken down. Supremacy keeping Kimbo quiet with that one. And it looks like they're now making a push on that pit. Yeah, it's very important right here for New York to, first of all, get this side base. That's very important. And then push on and help his teammates in the pit. It's turned over now to Supremacy, despite them not getting either of the two power-ups on the map. They still maintain control. And now, look, they're supplementing this pit control with not only the first two slays, but this turbine control as well. That's going to allow his teammates to push on a little bit, not have to worry about the pit being captured. As we say that a player, that's Moe's going for that pit. And you cannot do that while the enemy team have complete control of the map. And as a result, Nurex now on a tear. Two in a row. Lovely shots right there. And this could be a potential triple cap for just a moment as Infused are taking the red base. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a lead escalating potentially here if they can hold this for a few more moments. They will take the lead. Grenade does come in. Two grenades. Nurex staying alive well, though. Playing his life nicely. They are going to be on the radar. But look at this kill feed right now. Respectful with a double. Moe's with two as well. They immediately collapse on this pit as well. That's going to be four dead here for Supremacy. They're going to take control back of the pit away from the French squad. Team Infuse going to be scoring once again. And look at this, Harry. The rotations look to be coming in a little bit early here. We see the power-ups coming up in around 30 seconds. Be interesting to see if they are going to come into effect or if this game is going to be closed out before then. Real heartbreaking situation there for Supremacy. They did such a good job getting back into the game with this comeback, but that three down in a row, four down it even was. Respectful seems to have turned up to this late game right here. And these power ups, like you said, Mark, might not even come into play in this game. Overshield is coming up right now. You see that just pop up. It's Kimbo who's in a position. So. A handful of camouflages and an overshield for Kimbo is going to close out this game for Team Infused. Would be very surprised if Supremacy pull off something miraculous to keep this one going. Yeah, Kimbo just has to contest this pit at the last moment here. If he picks up this kill, this would pretty much be game over. He does exactly that. They hop out of that pit hill. It is going to be Team Infused who go up 1-0 to zero in our grand final here at HCS London. Very scrappy affair. Very even affair as well, despite what we saw on the, the gameplay. Only two kills separating the two sides. In terms of slays, the power-up pickups were the major difference, though. We spoke about Coach Peck, Coach Havoc, in the back lines, four team infused. They got seven power-ups that game. Seven power-ups. Incredible stuff. And then we saw every single time that we seemed to go to them. One of them had no field. Was, I think Kimbo got was every single camouflage in there. 17 and 18 from Respectful involved in a lot of battles, but yes, Mr. Camouflage himself, it is Kimbo, the German powerhouse, 23, 11 and 10, Harry. And for the first time today, we've seen all of the other players putting up big stats. Now we're in the grand final, Kimbo's taking his time to shine. Yeah, good stuff from Infuse. I mean, look at that assist column, two players 
with the high teens of assists. Very nice. And we said at the start of that Empire Strongholds game, Kimbo is a man who is such a demon slayer-wise. He has such a consistent shot. Very rare he loses a fight where it's on even ground. And when you supplement him with a, a camouflage and a plasma pistol to play with, as he had at that first period of play where he got that first camouflage, it's so tough to stop him. And, and we see that in the stat line at the end of the game. 23 kills, 10 deaths. That's a plus 13 spread. That's a lot for a uh, for game one of a grand finals. That's a player taking over the game. Yeah, unlucky for some, not for Kimba. That's going to be the first win on the board here in this best of seven, of course. Infused only need to win one best of seven here. Supremacy will have to win two back to back if they want to be crowned champions of HCS London. And not only was that the first win on the board for Infused, Harry, that was a strongholds game type. One of the staples of this French squad they seem so strong in. Do you think that's a little bit of a statement coming out of Team Infused here? Um, I actually see Empire Strongholds as one of, one of Infused's stronger game types. I actually see it as one of, in terms of Strongholds, Supremacy's weakest, up there with Plaza. I only really rate Supremacy's Stronghold game on Eden and the Rig. We saw throughout the entirety of this weekend they're capable of comebacks, even though they are down on those maps. But I honestly think Empire is something they need to work on. We saw in that game number one, Infused, their power-up timings was the difference You've got to say, if they get a couple of those power-ups, maybe get a camouflage in, in the hands of a player like Fraga, who is, you know, in the past in HCS London, has been a very flank-orientated player, has been very solid. It's almost like a Kimbo-style player for the French Supremacy Squad. Maybe that could have been the difference in that game because their pushes outside of the power-up pickups were very, very good. They just didn't get those power-ups. Yeah, always going to make life difficult if you don't get those. But moving on to game number two of the series, of course, it is going to be Slayer, and we are heading over to Truth, Harry. It's the truth. Camouflage going to be so important. We've seen... Dude, we haven't done the thing yet. Oh, yeah, sure. Do the thing. Right. There we go. Branding. Yeah, there we go. Camouflage is going to be so vital. No, Ghost in the Army called them gang signs. Gang, gang signs? Gang signs in we, the chat. We can look it? like... Draw a picture of two people who will never be in a gang, and literally this will about? be it. I'm this will literally street. be it. Anyway, talking about Truth... Uh, Slayer, we've seen how important the power-ups were on the last map. Obviously, that camouflage is going to be on here. Do you think that's going to play a factor again if Supremacy want to get back in? I mean, yes and no. The first camouflage almost definitely will be burned in this game, right? Truth is a, a very close quarters arena's map. You really don't see a player escape unscathed on Truth Capture the Flag, especially on Truth Slayer. And that first camouflage often is contested by both sets of players and is often burned. So, yeah, maybe later on in the game when both teams kind of forget about that power-up timing, the coaches are going to come into play on this one. So maybe a little bit later on, but not in the early game. Of course, the winner of this not only will be crown champions of HCS London, they will be $10,000 better off for their efforts as well. Truth Slayer, 50 kills to win. Camouflage, tack Mac bottom mid as well. Stay off that radar, lay those shots down across map. 1-0 to Team Infused at the moment, Supremacy. Are they going to answer back? Yeah, I want to start this one off with SLG from Supremacy. I hear the crowd getting hyped. Guys, Supremacy are going to need your energy in this game, so make sure you are cheering for this squad, because right now they need to win two best of sevens in this grand final against an Infused team who have been so dominant here in HCS London. They are, by the way, our Team Infused, still on for a perfect tournament without dropping a game. It's a good point, but that's going to be a fantastic start here from Supremacy. It's going to be four to one. They have. All of Team Infused already coming off the respawn. We're starting this one off with the man himself, SLG, laying shots down across map. Harry, I know you want to point something out here. Yeah, so I said the first camouflage of the game is more than likely going to be burned. It was actually Nurix who got himself a kill, then grabbed that power up. He was just taken down, though, as we saw in the kill feed. But yeah, a nice, healthy three-point lead here. Still early days in this game, but you got to say, for Supremacy, that's the start they need. I want to stay on board mostly this game with the French squad because they're the oh, team that needs to get Jimbo. done in this grand finals. But... At the moment, it doesn't look like they're in a great position in this game. They've thrown away their three-point lead they had early on from great pushes from Team Infused. Yeah, SLG picks up a kill here. They have a one-kill lead at the moment. We saw momentarily there, Team Infused did manage to pick up a rally of slays. It's going to be Moe's being taken down to very low shields, trapped in that bubble. You'll see SLG working with his teammate, but doesn't actually respond to the call out there. Two players on Fragger's team are going to go down, and Moses is still alive. He should have been an easy kill here. Finally, Fragger takes him down, but he's down to no shields. And look ahead of him. Three red exits. All of his teammates fall. That's just a communication issue there for me, Harry. Absolutely, yeah. SLG needs to be responding to that callout. Maybe he was pushing one of his own kills was SLG at top carbine. But yeah, he really should be turning around and helping Fragger out with that player. Instead, three players from Supremacy did go down. We'll drop over to the infused side. They have just taken a lead. Respectful will go down, though. We'll 
to see a little bit of a Jimbo POV right now because, I mean, camouflage in around 30 seconds. That's why you see him kind of fighting around this pink tower right here. So important you get not only P1 control, but also P2 control because even if you surrender that pink tower bottom area to the enemy team, if you have pink 2 control, you can still rain nades down upon that camouflage area for when the enemy team are pushing. Good setup from Infuse right now for this camouflage. All the Supremacy players seem to be stuck at Carbine, the furthest point away on the map from that camouflage. And here we go, Kimbo set up bottom mid round. That pink tower trying to be in a position to get that camo and the push from Kimbo, although he went down there, took the eyes off of that camo from three different Supremacy players, which allowed Jimbo to steal him, pick that one up. It's little plays like that. You might think that's a death for Kimbo, but the potential here by securing this power up for Jimbo to go on a run because of that, it weighs, it weighs more than that one death. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, Supremacy now, they have to keep guessing where Jimbo is. Jimbo, one of those players who will stay alive very, very well. He knows all the routes available to him at any given point on a map, and now they have to worry about him being invisible at the same time. So, still the same sneaky player, but now you've made him even more sneaky. Only down by one, though, are Supremacy, despite them not performing on that camouflage grab. Fused will extend the lead to two now, but this is a fairly close game going into the next camouflage in around a couple of a couple of minutes, excuse me, in the next minute, Kimbo with a couple of kills. That was absolutely vital. That's going to extend the lead now to five. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried here. If SLG doesn't manage to get out with his life here, that's going to be Moe's taking that player down. And that was essentially four players coming off the respawn here. Although off the respawn, it's actually Supremacy who land all of their shots and take down three members of four kill game at this point. Eight and a half minutes left in this map, of course. Team Infuse now hit that halfway mark. As far as kills are concerned, just a three kill game. Mose does pick one up, however. Looks like Respectful playing this one slowly. Gonna take down Fragger as well. Mose working with Respectful to extend that lead once more. Respectful, by the way, first player in the game to hit that 10 point mark. One thing I will say though, at the moment, it looks like Infused are trapped at Carbine. And if you look at that game clock in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you will know that Camouflage coming up fairly soon. So that's why you see Respectful here. Get off that Carbine Tower as soon as possible. Try and get his team at base so they can push towards this camouflage. But Kimbo already has P2 control. He is the last alive for Team Infused right here, though. And looks like Nurix, again, has flanked around to this Carbine side. But he needs to get over towards that camouflage, which has now just appeared on the map. Yeah. His teammates will be respawning near him, of course. As you can see, the Red X is going up. That means that's going to be two dead for Supremacy here. Infused are going to be in a perfect position to potentially pick up that camo. And look at this. It's Mose who does manage to get that one. So. Little bits of positional misplay slightly ever so from there from Supremacy and Nurix. Forcing teammates to come off those respawns if it would have won, won those battles potentially. Could have secured that, but because it didn't go their way, his team potentially at a disadvantage, but Mose is going to hit the perfect shots on Nurix to put him back in the respawn screen. 33 to 29. Mose going to try and take down Punisher as well. If he can finish this kill, it would be huge. His teammate Respectful comes in to help him out, though. That's going to be three dead. Look at this team of few starting to run away now. Yeah, all from that kind of misplay from Supremacy where we had Nurix flanking around at that Carbine Tower. Influenced a couple of spawns in favor of his team. Furthest away from that camouflage, a complete change of what we saw from Team Infused. As soon as they saw they were spawning at Carbine with that camouflage coming up, Respectful's first thought, let's get into blue, let's get ourselves a base and get a roof over our heads and look at this scoreline now. All from that one camouflage, that's an eight point gap that has opened up in this game. Amazing how one power up can change the game so much. Team Infused just seem to be rolling at the moment. They're all finishing each other's kills. Mo's been alive for a fairly long time here. He's going to immediately try and put the pressure on, but look at this, met by three blue bodies from Super. Supremacy trying desperately to stay alive. He needs to call this out to his teammates and has asked for their assistance across map and he's done a fantastic job in the face of those three players to stay alive. However, his other teammates have been taken down. Respectful sat up in the attic here. The car attic at the red base lets two players run past him. If he can take down SLG here, that should be a huge kill. Can't land his shot oh, though. No. It's gonna be Supremacy who make him pay. A four, sorry, a five kill game right now. Punisher picks up another kill as well. Nurix now. On the car side of the map again, sees all these players coming off the respawn. All he has to do right now is just buy time for his squad. Nurex cannot sit here. The camouflage is coming up very soon. I'm not sure why Infused... Oh, that's why he sat there. Why is he being? Why are they being sucked into this position right here, Infused? The camouflage is coming up very soon. Why are they chasing kills when that power-up's almost up? You see Moe's right there. He's the only one on Infused with his wits about him. They're going to know the exact timing because they've had the past couple, but yeah. Luckily for them, it's not a misplay. They will get the burn in the hands of Kimbo, but look at this scoreline now. We're evening up here for Supremacy. 
And a bit of a misplay there, in my opinion, from Infuse. Why were they chasing Nurex on that Carbine Bubble? They didn't execute on the kill, which is what they were overextending to do. Nurex picks up two, and the camouflage for Infuse is a non-factor. Two times in a row, we've seen a mistake from a team not looking at that bigger picture when that camo is popping. One kill, the difference between these two teams. Fragger picks up a grenade. Kill in the feed as well. Punisher going to be sitting in this power position on P2. You can see all these players coming off respawn as well for Infused. Five minutes left in this game. Punisher just playing this one slowly. You can see, going to pick up one kill there across map. Fragger picks down another kill as well. It's going to be Moe's versus Punisher here. Moe's pushing out aggressively, but here comes the help. It's going to be his teammate pushing into that P attic. It's going to be Fragger looking to find Moe's and finish that kill, but somehow Moe's has escaped here, Harry. Yeah, he has. He's trying to move over to this car one side again, but Frag is putting so much damage down on the map. He's run out of bullets. He needs to salvage some right now. 48 kill on the board here for Supremacy. Can they take this game number two? You have to say it's one of the most vital Slayer games they've played in their career as a team, and they are just two kills away from sealing it out. Oh, no! You can't do that, Fragger. That That's is the worst boy. possible time to make that mistake. That's Hopefully your boy. it doesn't come, but look at this. The push coming in from Team Nimbus. Oh, no. Nimbo picks up another kill. It's 49-49. The last kill is going to win this game. One dead left, and it's Timbo who closes the game out. A massive mistake coming in from Supremacy towards the end of that game. Hands the game to Team Infused. Fragger, why? Come on, man. That's your boy. That's your boy. That's your captain. Come on, man. I'm lost for words. I have never seen a finish to a game like that in a Slayer. What do you say to your teammates? Sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, you yeah, got in the way. Sorry. What are you doing? Uh, jumping in front of my nade, man. Come on. Yeah, I told you that was coming on that exact trajectory. Trigonometry. The one thing I do want to uh, praise Team Infuse for towards the end of that, though. They got that lucky break. However, Moe's aggressively pushed those last players, tried to make the plays for Team Infuse, and it always seems to be in those clutch, clutch moments in games, the teams who try and take the initiative, Harry, they're the ones who close it out. Absolutely. We'll take a look at the stats right here. A lot of people will be kind of looking at Fragger. Fair enough, he's stuck SLG at the end, but... Looking at that stat line, 8 and, eight and 12, if you read a little bit deeper, he had those 16 assists as well. So what is that, 24 kills? Almost half the kills of his team he's contributing towards right there. And still kept his deaths around that 12 mark as well. So honestly, not the worst game in the world from Fragger right there. Just that real unfortunate mistake we caught on stream right there. That was so, so unfortunate. It's honestly, probably decided the game. It's literally the definition of hold this L. Like, he literally <laughs> threw one at him and he caught it on his back. But oh, looking at the no. across the board, I mean, the thing that stands out for me on the statistics there is the assists coming out of Team Infused. The assists, double digit assists for every single player on that team. What does that say to you, Harry? It says they're shooting together, Mark. It says they're listening to each other. It says they're cleaning up each other's kills. And honestly, it was more individual plays that we saw from Supremacy rather than the team coordinated plays that we saw pushing bases and collapsing on them as we saw from Team Infuse. So yeah, I think that was the difference maker. They were definitely listening to each other and pushing in together. And that's why we saw the assist column pretty big there for Team Infused. What do you think the mentality of Team Supremacy is Horrible, right? like, no. terrible, like, especially <laughs> Fragger. Imagine being in the mind of Fragger right now. You stuck your teammate, 48, 48. I mean, you don't mean to do it. Like, obviously, he doesn't mean to do it. I mean, yeah, he meant to it, do accidents that. happen, but it's throwing. in a game like that, you know, if it's 12 all, fine. You know, mistakes are made. Yeah. Sorry, Norman. It was 48, 48. Mm. Not good. What do you say? To, what do you think Norman's thinking? <laughs> Get me off this team, man. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> the free agent thread is open already for Norton. <laughs> I'm only teammates who won't stick Of course, we're going to be uh, moving into a game three now, Harry. I mean, we've already had a hot start to this series. I just feel like Supremacy had to win that last game. It was in their hands. And now we're moving on to capture the flag Coliseum. Infused are very strong on this one. And what have we said before in the past about Supremacy on this map? How badly they are collapsing on those power weapons. They just never seem to get a hold of the rocket launcher on this map. This is my biggest, biggest beef with Supremacy. Just get a hold of those power weapons, put them into use. When they get those weapons, they are so, so good with them, but infused, they are just, they're just better at getting the power-ups and the power weapons. We saw in the last game, Supremacy only had the one camouflage, so infused three, and that's not a good stat line in a game type 
that's 50-49. I mean, it was 50-48 in the end, but you take away that stick, that betrayal on SLG, I mean, it's 50-49 that game. Yeah, and not only that, I think if we go across the two games, I mean, you look at that first game, the Empire Stronghold. 7-3. Seven 7-3. to, three seven to three. So, I mean, there's such an obvious problem here for, t for Supremacy in this series. They need to prioritize those power weapons, Harry. They need to not only get them in their hands, they need to put them to use. But it's going to be capture the flag, Coliseum, as our game number three. Do we still have some Infused fans in the house? Do we still have some Supremacy fans in the house as well? Come on, Supremacy. I'm not biased. Time for Supremacy to answer back in our grand final here at HCS London. I'm going to start this one off with Kimbo because this man is going to be heading straight towards that sniper. Yeah, and we see Kimbo in the past with Snipe. Hit some really critical shots for his team. Definitely not some of the ones that you see. I just see you grabbing your heart right there, Mark. You thought he was going for that frosty strap, but... Yeah, this is uh, very strange how Kimbo is not even contested right there for that snipe. And we spoke about Supremacy's woes in grabbing power weapons. Jimbo grabbed the first one. You see in the kill feed right there, Jimbo did have those rockets, but he was taken down. So that will actually transition into the hands of Punisher. You can see that's exactly who Kimbo is looking for right there. And that is a poor waste of that rocket, in my opinion. Shouldn't be firing that one long range. Almost connects with the no scope. But yeah, luckily it's one. V1 power weapons wise and Punisher using that one to good use, but look at those shots from Kimbo, man. He's having none of it from SLG. Kimbo still with his sniper rifle, of course. Rocket launcher does seem to be Ooh. down at the moment. Kimbo does pick up a nice headshot there. Oh, I thought he was going to hit the double headshot there, but just the body shot. Jimbo going to be pushing in here, and I love what I'm seeing from Kimbo here. We have questioned before his, some of his objective play and that aggression towards the base, but immediately pushing up. They're now in a perfect position to collapse on this team. The player has spawned out, though, in the maze. He's going to be taken down, though. No, he matches actually get away. Kimbo didn't land that, but Moe's cleans that one up. And look at this, a present on the floor during this flag run. Kimbo's got all the toys. It's funny how we were talking about Infused grabbing power weapons. Look what, look what Kimbo's got right here. Oh! No problem, no scope. Right there, he only had a rocket to play with. We'll damage that last player, but it looks like it is a flag actually still on the move here. Oh Ooh, my was, god! That's huge if he had stayed alive, but I don't think anyone's going to be able to get a touch on that flag. So that one's actually going to go back home for Supremacy. Nice play from Moe's, but in the end, they don't get the flag. I thought for a moment there, Moe's was going to manage to stay in alive in such a difficult situation. Would have allowed him to almost single-handedly 2v1 that situation and get the first flag on the board, but Supremacy... Managing to keep this at a stalemate. That rocket launcher is coming up. And finally, we see a player from Supremacy trying to prioritize that rocket launcher. We're going to see a strong, aggressive push coming in here from the Supremacy squad. It's going to be respectful. Putting shots down on SLG. Backing him back up here. Not sure if anyone has managed to get the rockets in their hands, but Supremacy, once again, do have map control. So there's the opportunity for any player coming off the respawn here for Supremacy to maybe go for those. I mean, you say they have map control, but it's a complete difference in the two squads. Let's hop over to Moe's right here. SLG's initial thought right there was to go for the flag while the rockets are up. And Moe's thought was, hey, let me block these elbow spawns and put them as far away from the rockets as possible. Yes, Moe's is going to go down right there, but Jimbo now can contest these rockets because none of the Supremacy players were trying to think about getting those. Punisher, luckily, will grab them himself and will get a kill out of them as well. But... Yeah, you've got to say, if you are Supremacy right there, you've got to be very wary at all times of that rocket launcher. You've got to make sure you are playing for that. Luckily, they get away with it this time, but next time they need to be much more vigilant. Interesting point here. Fragger actually tried to prioritize that flag. There was a rocket launcher just by his side, but it looks like a good decision right now because Supremacy are going to get their first flag cap on the board. The rocket launcher has fallen into the hands of Respectful, though, so although they get that first flag on the board. They have to be very wary of this man here. Brandon Stone's pushing aggressively on their base. Yeah, the counter cap is always a worry if you're going up against Team Infused. Jimbo is right near that flag. He has a perfect sight line. And now this is a good position for this flag to be in if you're both teams, honestly. If you're Infused, all you're thinking about is slaying out and then just running that flag further on through the sniper tower. But it's also in quite a wide open position. The worry for Supremacy, though, is that this man has snipe. He maybe should have backed off right there. But at the same time, you have to applaud the bravery to go for that objective play despite him having that power weapon. Would have liked to have seen him back off a little bit though and maybe salvage that one. Not for the first time in the series, we see Supremacy with a strong start in their game. Question is now, can they actually close out this? Obviously only one flag cap on the board at the moment. We are playing first to three. Fragging going to pick up a kill here and look at this Harry. It's almost as if they can hit you in their ears on that main stage. He does get taken down but trying at least to prioritize that rocket launcher which is now Popping up. Respectful going to be sat up on the catwalk here with the DMR. So any Supremacy players who might be looking to pop towards that one, Harry, he's going to have the weaponry to take them down at range. Jimbo in a battle here. He's going to trade out the kill. So it looks like that rocket launcher is still going to be free. And look at this. Nurix now going to pick this one up. And it's going to be for the first... Sorry. Finally, 
Supremacy are going to be prioritizing that rocket. Punishes the hero right there. I swapped over to him because he was making it perfect. Flank over to that red elbow and, and made sure that Jimbo, who wanted to grab those rockets uncontested, couldn't do so. That's so much better from Supremacy. That's what I like to see. Mid-game adjustments on that rocket launcher so, so vital. And look at these mid-map slays that Nurex is gifted because he has this weapon in his possession right here. Fair enough, he blows himself down right there. He will actually take himself out, but SLG does have this sniper. And much better execution now on the power weapons from Supremacy, despite them not really getting anything from it. Blows does take down one player. The rocket launcher does get turned over to Team Infuse. Just one in the barrel, though. For Kimbo to work with. He just needs that call out. Takes down Nurex, who's caught out bottom mid here. And now, again, Kimbo aggressively pushing on this cave. I love to see this. What he's added to his game. Now, prioritizing that flag. Would like to see him drop this one off to a teammate. Exactly what he does. Two do kills do go down to the hands of Supremacy, however. So right now, Kimbo's job is just to try and desperately stay alive. Make sure that they don't get that flag themselves back to the base. And now he has to turn his attention back to that flag. Because look at this, Frag has already got this one back to his base. None of his teammates, though, in position. And it is going to be Infused, who steals this one away. Frag, the pantomime villain of the last game, does get that flag back to his own base. And the six-minute mark is coming up soon. So if he can hop on that return after getting this kill on Jimbo, which he doesn't quite make happen, he has to worry about this other player going around there as well. But the return is almost coming in. This slay is absolutely vital. This will be the flag capture, surely, for Nurex. Frag will get that return. And Supremacy 2 to the good at the six-minute mark. Rockets and Snipe coming up right now. They have control on both towers for both of those weapons. Let's see if they can execute on both of these and put this game to bed. Supremacy warming into this series and going to be two dead once again. Rocket Launcher is up, as you say, as well as that sniper rifle. So if they can pick up a couple of slays here, we see Punisher trying to aggressively push in. Look at this SLG. Not sure if he's aware there is a player with those rockets. Can't quite connect. So Kimbo is going to steal away with those. SLG desperately trying to stay alive. Keep that sniper out of the hands of Team Infuse because the last thing you want to do is uh -oh. give both power weapons over to him. Needs to hit a shot here. Respectful takes it out of his hands, however. Punisher going to pick up a kill. Kimbo going to use the rockets now and... Exactly what Supremacy didn't need to happen is happening, but Punisher does at least quell the threat of those rockets. Ooh, Punisher there was trying to flank round to the infused base, but he was actually backspacked by a player coming off the respawn, I think. And SLG knows there's a player above him, obviously listening to that communication right there. But while we're talking about this, Respectful has salvaged the old sniper, and I'm not sure where rockets are in the game at the moment. Looks like they're actually in the hands of Nurex for Supremacy, so keep an eye on that kill feed. If Nurex goes down, that's the power weapon out of the game, but the first two slays are actually going in favor of Supremacy. And Nurex, by the way, fell off of the map. I glanced on our quad POV right there. He actually threw those rockets off the map, so a non-factor now for the rockets. Supremacy, just with just over five minutes left to see out this game. Pretty surprised how this one has gone, actually. They have been in control of the map for the majority of it. Respectful, trying to push on the base. You can see Punisher lining that one up. Three players, though, are going to be flying in. It's Kimbo with a double kill. Another player is on the flag, but there is an overextender here for Supremacy. So it's going to be so vile that he stays alive. I believe it's SLG who's actually on the overextension. It's going to be SLG actually here against Moe's. Moe's backs him up. Both players, no shield, however. SLG has recycled that sniper rifle. Nurix and SLG. Gonna be taking down two players of their own. Look at this, Frag has managed to get this one all the way back to the base. If he can get around this corner, there might be an opportunity, but they are three dead. It's up to SLG to make a play here. Drops one shield, drops a second oh shield. Trying to do everything he's, he can to secure this cap. Respectful gonna be down to no shields here. Can he put this flag in a position? A smart play though from Respectful, putting that into the open. I think one of the infused players has managed to secure Rocket, so it's gonna be all up to Moe's to try and power in here. Can he finish this kill off? That player off the respawn. Huge shots coming in from Moe's. That's going to allow his teammates to come not off the respawn as well as that. He's now putting pressure on the return. Yeah, so much pressure coming in right here. You hear Fragger on the main stage going huge. And he's just making sure his voice is heard on the infused side. This is a kind of a weird standoff, honestly, because we have Snipe in the hands of Respectful and Moe's, as we see on our screens, with that rocket launcher as well. So Ooh, power weapons and perfect shots. Not quite, but figuratively perfect shots there from Moe's and he surely will get this return and Jimbo is waiting at his own base as soon as that return comes in that's going to be two to one. And not only that I saw Respectful has a sniper rifle who picked up a double kill and there's an opportunity here for a double cap we can see Team Infused not happy with just the one they're looking for two as Kimbo picks up two kills in the feed Nurex answers back but I believe that flag is still moving across the map you can see Bran and Moe's the service tax for Respectful and Moe's Gonna be moving this one across, and by the looks of it, just like that, Harry, I think we could be tied up two to two. Yeah, we see it go in. And 
We'll see SLG now, team captain, coming off the respawn. This is the man that needs to galvanize his troops. He needs to lead his boys into, into battle, and that's a good way to do it. Taking down Jimbo right there. They will trade Slays as Punisher goes down. But something we've seen so much from this game, from this team infused team, is they are happy to fly in several players at once. SLG will get taken down right there, but look at this. Punisher again trying this elbow flank. It's worked out for the first two captures, but he has been spotted and surely been called out here by Team Infused. Yep, here comes the nades, and he's doing good damage right here. He needs his teammates to, to help him out right here. They need to supplement this push. Fair enough, they're fighting at Sniper Tower right now, but Punisher is distracting at least one of the Infused members right here. If there is a player back base, and there is not. Oh, there it is. He's wrong in the side. wrong corner. Come on, man. You should have known that. Yeah, I was going to say, that was a huge 1v1 because his teammates picked up two kills in the feed. While he pushed in on the base, if he could, could have picked up the kill there on Kimbo, it would have created a three dead and an opportunity for them to run potentially the final flag of this game. Of course, now tied up at two to two. The next flag will win in this game. Fragalan's a body shot. Oh, it's going to be cleaned up as well. That's the Rockets being taken out of the hands of Jimbo. Punisher picks up a big double, and you can see now the push is coming in from Team Supremacy. Fragger set up here. All of the players in position. He can hit this shot. It's Fragger hitting a shot. All three players. Converging on the base, looks like there was a call to oh. hit, pick the flag, but Fragger is hitting headshots. The flag is moving, can they find those last two respawners? It's gonna be Mose, he's gonna be taken down as well. Jimbo coming off the respawn, if he can manage to pick up a kill or at least a trade here to allow his teammates to come off the respawn. Will buy his team some time, but I just can't quite put my finger on what went wrong for Supremacy there. I can tell you exactly what went wrong. They had Nurex pushing elbow. You need to keep those spawns that are completely open. I mean, you had three players pushing in from that snipe side, two of them in the flag back off a little bit. Let them spawn there. You need to make sure you know exactly where they're spawning. Punisher, by the way, as you see in the kill feed, getting kills constantly. I believe he's top kills in the game right now with 25, and he most certainly is. So I almost want to see what this man's doing. He's been flanking low side almost the entire game, keeping Infused honest. And Jimbo, who, by the way, just came off the respawn, has no idea this man's here. Luckily, there is a player top garbine to look at him, and that's a bit of a wasted death in my opinion. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. Just try and buy time in that position. You know you've been called out. You know there's going to be people looking for you. Here comes the push once again from Team Infused. It's respectful, doing a great job of staying alive. That's going to be two dead. If they can pick up this kill, it's going to be another one going down here. A killing spree for Respectful. Last player going to be running that flag, so they're going to be more than aware of his position. Fragger just needs to try and buy as much time as he can here. He's going to have to take down Jimbo. If Jimbo can get this re, the flag is already back at base, but no supremacy somehow get a pull on it. SLG trying to be a hero right now. Respectful going to be hopping that return. It's going to be traded out, though. I'm not sure if that flag did go home. One second left on the clock. The flag does not get returned, though, Harry. Oh, 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 oh. The question is, where is that flag? It's all the way back at the Supremacy base. So we slow down a little bit right here. I like how we're playing very aggressive with this flagnum right here, but just to make sure. Oh, you're going to get the re. Happen. That's absolutely huge. Now it's all up trade. to SLG. They trade the re's right there. And wow. Oh no, they don't actually. They still have the flag alive. So Nurex, if you want to win the game. Nurex wins the game for Supremacy. Nurex the hero in game number three for Supremacy. They close out policy and capture the flag. Three to two after being two nil up. The game was tied at two to two, but the new addition to Supremacy, Nurex with a huge play at the end there to get that flag back, wins a huge 1v1 on his flag to secure his team the game. Any questions you had about Nurex's place on this Supremacy squad, throw him out the window. He's performed just amicably on this Supremacy squad this event here in HCS London. I mean, it, it was just an incredible game. Infused, by the way, out slaying Supremacy. So that's the second game this series, well, second game since these two teams last met, I think, where Supremacy have been outslayed and still went on to win the game. And one thing to note, that's the end of Infused's perfect tournament. The first game they have lost in the tournament. Rest in Pepsis. That's going to give Supremacy all sorts of confidence as we move into the next game, but that was a crazy Coliseum capture the flag. How much of a massive play did we see from those two Supremacy players right at the end with almost a second left, just managing to win their battles and get that one away? So the first one, SLG with the back smack and then the return, and then I honestly thought Infused had gotten the return, but the flag, luckily, for Supremacy, not luckily, very well played from them through it window, and then we saw Nurex win a key flagnum battle on his own 1v1 kind of window area. Gets the kill on the player in flag, makes sure he can't touch the flag, and then the rest is history. They put that game to bed, and it's actually much better power weapon control from Supremacy that game. In fact, the, the power weapon kills disparity between the two teams, only two 
uh, five for infused and three for supremacy. So despite being outslayed and having less power weapon can be the story so far, doesn't it? As long as they can keep that disparity pretty close, supremacy seems to be all in this series. You can see Kimbo on your screen there. Again, team infused. Every single player on their team positive. Respectful with 20 assists, but still losing that objective game. What do you think went wrong for them? It's a good question. I mean, we saw a lot of good pushes from them, honestly. The amount of times we saw three or more infused players all diving in that base at the same time was, it was very frequent. I mean, when you're doing that coordinated push time and time and time again, you're very much expected to win the game, right? And honestly, can't pinpoint exactly what went wrong for them. I mean, we saw constantly Punisher, we jumped on his POV, flanking Trench, flanking that elbow side constantly throughout the game. So I think he almost had a bit of a Ramirez effect right there. They weren't expecting Punisher to be that type of player, to be a Ramirez type of player, a thorn in the side. And you can see on screen what that win means to the French squad. Belief reinstalled in Supremacy after an unfortunate end to game number two. They win game number three. They could be 2-1 up in this series. They could well be. And the next game is going to be Strongholds on the rig, Harry. Strongholds, the staple of Supremacy. Can they tie this series up? Strongholds, the staple of Supremacy. But the rig Strongholds infuse best game type. So, yeah, they're going to have to pull something, some French magic out of the bag, I feel, to take this one away. I mean almost definitely supremacy are gonna be up against the wall on this one infused we've seen in the past they slay 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 so well they outslayed supremacy in all three games so far this series so they're gonna need to turn that tide make sure you're controlling these weapons on the map don't let the likes of kimbo and moe's grab rail guns scatter shots don't let them put up big numbers big killing frenzies killing sprees don't let them get on the board stifle them early and make sure you are making your kills happen well, it's a good start here. Fragger gonna take down Kimbo. We know how important that kill can be. And look at that, Fragger picks up a massive kill because that was Moe's who actually had the railgun, but it does look like Jimbo has managed to steal that camouflage away. So it's gonna be Jimbo here. He's gonna find himself, a, oh, potentially gonna find himself a railgun, but his teammates decides to pick that one up instead. They're gonna capture the basement, but early on, it's gonna be BR base and Nest in the hands of Supremacy. But very early in the game, and look at this, Jimbo now found himself a present. Yeah, he needs to make sure he stays alive right here, though. You can't be greedy when going for those weapons. If, you, if it costs you your life with this power-up, then it's, it's very, very unfortunate. But it's lucky he was able to gain his shields back right there, has this scatter shot to play with, and now if you're Supremacy, you have to be very, very wary. You almost want to sit back on your one stronghold right here and make sure you don't fall into the trap of Team Infused. Bounce off the floor the bounce shot right there from jimbo and it looks like it's respectful with the railgun here for team infused as well you almost want to sit back on this one cap if you're supremacy and that looks like what they're trying to do right here and we spoke about at the start of the game don't let players get hot early respectful with an early killing spree oh and another shot coming in from respectful can he find another one no most he's gonna pick up the back whack there on fragger before respectful has to unleash another shot from that scanner shot here we go now they're pushing that triple cap Two players here, look at all the players coming off the respawn though, but it doesn't matter because there's three players from Team Infuse just flooding this BR base and they're going to be able to potentially slay these players out as well. They're going to have them on a spawn rotation early on here, Harry. This could be a case of a lot of points getting wrapped up pretty quickly here. Yep, and this is the absolute nightmare you go up against in Team Infused on this game type. I love that push they do, rotating so, so well from their home stronghold in basement over to BR base. Three players we saw flooding. Camouflage coming up fairly soon along with that railgun, which has just popped down. Luckily, there's a player there for Supremacy. Oh no, oh. Moe's whiffs it, but luckily there was someone. I believe that was Punisher actually. To snatch that railgun away, I was going to say, it's so, so important. You make sure you don't let Moe's grab that one, but it's Jimbo with two camos in a row here for Team Infused. Yeah, bad news if you're a Supremacy fan, because Kim, uh, sorry, Jimbo. Has that camo, obviously aware of where that railgun was dropped as well as his teammate did have that in his hands momentarily. Oh, he's going to pick up a kill with the DMR. 49 to 6 though, the score at the moment. Looks like Punisher has managed to st steal that railgun back though, but Jimbo just playing this one nicely, just controlling this Whitehall has so many different angles. From this position, it's only going to take a maximum of a second or two to get eyes on any of those strongholds that these Supremacy players are looking to Yeah, you can see BR base, Nest and Basement from that Whitehall. That's why we see players cover that position so, so much. Still a little bit of camouflage left for Jimbo to play with right here, but yeah, we said this is one of Infused's best game types, despite Supremacy being very good at strongholds. 
they are going up against a different beast in Team Infuse right here. They'll give up the nest, but they maintain scoring 61 to 6. That's almost 10 times the amount of points Supremacy have. Yeah, and that was a fresh four dead as well. We can see in the feed, Respectful's got himself a railgun once again. So power weapon control is the story of the series so far. Team Infuse have been dominating it again in this game. Going to have two players on his radar. They're going to be below him. Scatter shot in the hands of Moe's as well. So just unfair battles here for Supremacy. Letting them get away with the Railgun, with the Scatter shot. It's going to make their life so, so hard. Yeah, power weapon control has been the tail of this game. Eight power weapon kills for Infused. Guess how many Supremacy have? Less. Nil poir. Nil poir. Zero. Absolutely none. So yeah, that really has been the difference maker in this game. We said at the start, you need to make sure you can't let Infused grab these weapons uncontested. Fair enough, Supremacy. They've tried fighting here and there, but first kill almost every single time thanks to Scattershot, Railguns, Kimbos. It's it's just too easy for Team Infuse right here. Another kill picked up. Mose, Jimbo working together. The Scattershot, when you get it in the hands of Mose, he is so good on this map with that weapon. Kimbo has the fresh Railgun as well. This is just a slaughter at the moment. 84-6 to six the score. Two kills for Kimbo as well in the feed. Mose going to have no problem. Pushing in to pick up another kill here. Kimbo picks up another kill. I think that might have been four in a row there for Kimbo. 92 with a triple cap in effect. This game is all but done. They're just collapsing onto the Supremacy lineup. That is going to be game, I believe. It is going to be Team Infused. So good. take game number four. So good our control of disconnects. That's how good <laughs> that game was. It was Kimbo's controller, actually. So he's pretty hyped up. So hyped up, his controller's flying everywhere, his wire's going out of his controller. But yeah, that was a dominating performance from Infused, and we said exactly why it was so. Just a, a great game all round, and I'm seeing very lackluster slaying performances all round from Supremacy on the score sheet. One obvious statistic once again, it sounds like a broken record, but 10 power weapon kills for Team Infused. Zero in that game for Supremacy. Three power-up pickups. Just not going to be able to get it done. Zero for Supremacy. Yeah, again, the tail. I mean, when you don't have, and you're going up against a railgun, you're going up against a scatter shot, going up against camouflages. I'm not surprised to see that amount of kills coming out of Supremacy. Three, three, six, and three. What can you do in that situation? Well, if you don't want to get single-digit clubbed, I mean, you've just got to roll around as a four and hope that they aren't rolling around as a four as well. I mean... So many times we saw Supremacy getting trapped on different spawn cycles thanks to the man on your screen just slaying out. I mean, what a performance from Kimbo in that game. 14 and 6 from him. And yeah, it's, it, it's a tough one. I, I still don't know how to crack the, the puzzle that is Team Infused. On Rig Strongholds, Flux and his XL squad manage, managed to do it in one of the online cups. And that was thanks to a Flux killing frenzy yeah, that's, went what, off. that's what you've got to do to take down this infused team we said at the start you've got to finish your kills and there just weren't enough kills across the board from supremacy looking at it totally 47 for infused 15 for supremacy that's just not good enough yeah and something to note from that game kimbo did actually get an no, overkill didn't. towards the end of that no, one call you out no, harry you no, pride no, yourself no, in your observing he didn't but you've just let every single person at twitch.tv slash everybody in the arena Everybody on Mixer, shh, shh, down. Shh, 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 shh. But I still believe in you. But let's have a look at that last game again. We've got the replays coming up as well. It's just going to be the infused show. Scattershot kill, railgun kill, killing sprees, camo. I mean, it's, it's what do you expect? It's not just the camos as well. Look at the weapon he's got. He's got a battle rifle. So railgun in the back pocket of Respectful right there. Thanks to the, the perfect shots help out as well. But... Yeah, you're right. It's just upgraded weaponry, the tail of the tape in that one. And Jimbo, he's loving life up there on the stage right now. He Jimbo knows they're now. just one game away, and this one's in the bag. He's got his feet up. He's like, hmm, when can I go back and stream? I mean, it's got to be soon, right? He just wants to get back in the gym, man. Jimbo's back. Slimbo. Slayer Plaza is going to be the next game type, Harry. One very simple question to you right now. Can Infused close the tournament out right now? Yes, I think so. And... The reason being is that we've seen teams hesitate against Team Infused on this game type, and Team Infused have made them pay. When you get Infused trapped in a tram or yard position, or even in blue, you have to collapse on them. No hesitation as a team. We've seen teams like Vexed struggle to do that in the past, and Infused have made them pay. I believe Vexed actually won a Slayer against them 50-49, but it was a huge comeback from Team Infused on that one thanks to their assertiveness and decisiveness on the map. So if you're Supremacy right here, the key is going to be 
be assertive, be decisive, do not hesitate at all, and make sure, for God's sake, make sure, make, make sure you get some power-ups and, and power weapons. Doesn't feel like we've seen any of them from Supremacy so far this series. Now let's talk a little bit about that man on screen there. Of course, that is a Mose. This man has had an incredibly consistent competition here in, at HCS London, something which has been questioned of him before, his consistency. What do you think has been the change from him from previous events to this one? From last season especially, I think his time in game. I mean, we saw at Atlanta on, on the Vex Ebuyer team that Moe's took over. He just didn't look sharp. He just looked a little bit rusty from lack of playtime. I think he's been so motivated since he's rejoined the number one team in Europe. He's assembled this little squad around him and... I think that's really, you know, lit a fire underneath him, so to speak. And, and that's the reason we're seeing a more consistent Mose now. He was seeing the Mose of old, and a lot of people had questions about Mose. You know, now automatics, now the Storm Rifle, now the Assault Rifle's out of the game. Will we see the same Mose? I think he's getting back to that form now. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I think he's been arguably one of the most important factors. We've seen Kimbo, Jimbo, and Respectful all being able to go off in big games, but it's always been that consistency of Mose. He's kind of the glue that holds this team together. And he certainly has been performing here at HCS London. But we want to know at home, people in the Twitch chat, everyone on Twitter, what use the think? hashtag HCS. Let us know how you think this series is going to end. Are Team Infused going to close this one out or are we going to see Supremacy push this to a second best of seven? Harry, what have Supremacy got to do, apart from the obvious that we keep repeating, to win this next game? I've said before, be decisive, be assertive. You, we've seen, you cannot hesitate here on Plaza Slayer. When you have the advantage, and the advantage in this game mode, by the way, aside from having the overshield and the sniper, is having map control. When you have Infused or the enemy team, whoever it may be, trapped in either blue, tram, or yard outside of the map, and you have top middle control, that height control, push it. Make sure you are pushing that advantage. Slay them in waves. Make them get on stilted spawn cycles. Make sure you are flanking that driveway, flanking around blue, flanking around hotel, wherever it may be. Do it as a squad. Do it as a team. Team Infused, just one more game away from securing that first place here at HCS London and being $10,000 better off as well. Drinks on Infused, if they win this next game, Supremacy will be looking to push it to a second best of seven. Slayer on Plaza is going to be potentially the last game of HCS London, or will Supremacy give us some more Halo action? Moses is going to be the person we started off with, the person we've been talking about. Can he have a big game here for Team Infused? Yeah, it's, a, it's not strictly vital he does that, but Moses with this... Plasma Pistol will help his teammates out because I don't know if you guys realized off screen Kimbo actually has that overshield. You can see him off in the distance. Not only does he have that, he has his favorite weapon to play with. Just missed that snipe right there, but he does connect with Nurix's face and this is a nightmare start for Supremacy. Moe's picking up Punisher and Kimbo now with a snipe. It's all going off right here in Gfinity. Yeah, the crowd are getting loud as well. Love to hear that, guys. Another potential kill going to be coming in here uh -oh. with the beatdown. But look at this. His teammate is there to help him out. Can Kimbo hit this shot? No, he can't. So that is actually going to be the sniper rifle. Turned over. No! Oh, SLG puts Respectful back into respawn for a few moments with a dirty snapshot there for the double. Has the sniper rifle as well. Fragger picks up another one, so we're tied up at 66. But Harry, importantly, the sniper rifle in control of Supremacy. Yeah, and in SLG's hands as well. Nice to see him hit a couple of shots here and there, honestly. Back up a little bit. I like how he's going back to Hotel to watch over his friends. Pushing over there. Does connect on the no scope, but can't quite get the kill. But again, look at this. Infused, working together to find SLG. Push him immediately. Don't let him get settled with that snipe. Be decisive. That's exactly what Infused are right now, and they've hunted down SLG, took the snipe out of their hands, and now they are all tied up in this game. And look at Jimbo here, just playing with Nurix, but Nurix doesn't want to play any games. He takes him down. SLG somehow has managed to get the sniper rifle back into his hands, and you cannot let that happen if you are Team Infused, because he's going to hit shots like we see there on most. 12 to 9 the score. Still sitting around this hotel. His teammate's going to be in a battle here around the blue area, but SLG hears that call out, tries to push him back. Moses is going to be potentially trying to be taken down by him, but good prioritization there from Team Infuse, making sure they keep that weapon out of the hands of SLG, making sure he goes down. But look at this. The kill is actually going in favor of Supremacy. 14 to 11. Can they turn this one around as well? Moe's going to be no shields here on the Prius, and it's going to be Nurex who wins the battle. Yeah, SLG is fighting over towards this sniper with area because he wants to rotate around the hotel right here. He knows it, but Infuse don't, but his sniper is down there somewhere, so he wants to try and salvage that, and there it is. Hello. So he's got it back, a five-point lead as well as that. I'm looking across our screens. It's actually Fragger from Supremacy with the overshield. So this is a very good sign right here for Supremacy, but looking at it right now, Punisher's actually lost 
all of his shields. Fragger, luckily, with overshield, is flanking driveway, though. I was going to ask you, how do you think Supremacy play this one? Do they wait for kills with that sniper rifle? Do you get aggressive? Do you take the fight to infuse in this situation? Yeah, I think you do, and that's what they're doing right now. I mean, I absolutely love the idea of pushing in very aggressive, but Infuse, their slaying power wins out. SLG does still have this sniper. You can bet Infuse are going to be flying at you any moment. If I'm SLG right now, I check this light rifle angle because, yeah, here come the nades and here come the players. You've got to be looking at that angle a little bit sooner. And as a result, he gets taken down and Infuse. They reinstate their control of the map. Yeah, disappointing in Supremacy there. I have to say they had every advantage going their way. They couldn't capitalize, however. Great push coming out from Team Infuse, though, led by Kimbo, of course, leading that charge. Take down that overshield. They do still have a deficit to make up, but the push timed perfectly as well because look at this. Kimbo has managed to land himself a sniper rifle. Fragger going to get that kill. Fragger also picking up a double kill here. Most does take him down, however. Three kills, the difference between these two teams. Another kill going to go down here to Respectful. Three kills, the difference, but Supremacy just hanging on to this lead. Yeah, luckily Kimbo has found his old sniper. Respectful had one as well. The one that SLG was chasing and cover things so so well but yeah that was, that was kind of disappointing from supremacy they did exactly what i told them to do be decisive but they just didn't capitalize on their advantages they had slg a little bit too far away from the action and his three compadres all went down and he was last alive he really should be expecting the push coming from infuse a lot sooner though and this is an interesting kind of dynamic of the game right now because this is about 50-50 map control in terms of both teams we're going to see teams push out of that tram area respectful we'll get one but this is key area to get kills in honestly because that overshield is coming up any moment in fact it's up right now so i'll keep an eye on who grabs that one it's going to be kimbo that actually is going to make his way over to that if he gets this in future oh, be right back kill. in the game but not only a huge kill but a perfect one from Nurex right there saving his team's blushes just one kill separating these two teams but it's now two red x's in front of fragger looks like supremacy were trying to push the team infused squad there via the loop it just didn't work out for them. Battles were lost once again. Two players going to be on the radar here. It's going to be Fragger who rotates around to clean up Respectful. Going to be taking heavy fire spots. Another player who's going to be bottom as well. Drop down a prediction aid to see if that player wants to play some games with him. As he finds Jimbo bottom middle here. Has to finish this kill on Jimbo. Can he? He finally does. After a few missed shots there. But that is going to increase his team's lead. 32 to 29 the score. Supremacy just eking out a lead again. Yeah, there is a sniper rifle in place somewhere because I saw a player with it, but it was Moe's who went down with it. I wonder whether or not he would have called that out to his teammates, but at the moment, no sniper in play. And I'm not sure if that benefits Supremacy or not. We need someone like SLG or on the infused side, Kimbo, to go off with this thing to really take this game into their own hands. Almost connects with the already weak player right there. But yeah, very close game so far. You just feel like the snipe might just be the difference in this one. Infused, as you hear from the announcer, they're gaining the lead. They have just a one kill lead. But when Kimbo has that sniper rifle, he's so good at just locking down this section of the map. Essentially, now anyone who tries to push through that blue, he's going to come straight into the crosshairs of Kimbo. Now he misses that shot on the green gun. Six minute mark coming up, Harry. We're almost approaching Wonderboy time. Yeah, that means snipe and overshield coming up. So very important for Supremacy to push out right here. That player being tagged means they might have to wait a little bit. And that's going to allow two snipes to go into the hands of Kim. Oh, Ooh. my word. And Jimbo. So two snipes in play for Infuse. And don't forget, they grab the last overshield as well. So this could be the play that wins them the game right here. Unless Supremacy do something about that. The overshield's up in one second. So Kimmo needs to go back towards top middle right here. In fact, it's going to be his teammate who actually just picked that one up. But he's taken down. So... Oh, in fact, no, it's respectful. He stays alive. Incredible play right there. And now they're up by three with Overshield and Snipers in play. This is Infused's game to lose. Only that they immediately collapse on those final players from Supremacy to clear out the Snipe side of the map. Just eight kills away. Not from only winning the game, Harry, but from winning HCS London. Another kill goes down to the hands of Respectful. Kimbo trying to line up that shot on that player. Peeking out on the driveway. A bit of a nosy Parker there. Seven kills left. Jimbo with this sniper rifle had a hot tournament so far with this weapon in particular. Can he close this one out now? Respectful does still have overshield in play. In fact, that's just decayed away. So no more overshield. And you can see how Infused are, are pushing forward very aggressively. This is the difference. When Infused get the kills, look at what Jimbo's doing with this sniper. He's pushing with his team. Fair enough, he might go down right here, but his teammate will trade that one off instantly. And the sniper still maintains in their possession, but he actually goes down. So 
A good play from Nurex to counter that, but that's what you need to do. Be decisive as a team. And just two kills away now, our team infused. Nurex needs to hit some shots and he needs to hit them quick. They're all trapped on the loop. Here comes the push from Team Infused. Nurex hits one shot, however. That's going to buy him some time. Moe's gets another kill, though. Team Infused is one kill away. Nurex doesn't want to say die at this point. He's trying so hard to keep his team in this one. One kill left for Team Infused is all they need. Nurex still has one bullet to work with, however. Can he make some magic happen? One per person sneaks by him. Can he finish this kill? We can. I believe there was another player in the yard. One player bottom mid going to be Jimbo. But it's going to be Jimbo who closes the game out. Team Infused win HCS London. The boys are back on top. Congratulations, Team Infused. HCS London champions. Well deserved. They won two out of the three online seeding cups. They are the number one team in Europe. It's official. Well played. Not quite the perfect tournament. They dropped a one in the final to the team who came runners up supremacy. But wow, what a dominating European performance there from Team Infused. And look at the scores. While all these players are shaking hands, no bad blood between these two teams. The man in the background, just walking off stage there with Respectful on his back in that game. Just went 19, 10, and 11. A triple kill in there as well. Brandon Stones seems to be the X Factor for this squad. And he almost always has been right. Almost any team he's on, we call him constantly best player in Europe, whether it's the team from last season, Vexed, right, when he was on that team.